Now let's get really crazy with it and see if this power station will run this air compressor and this table saw at the same time. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today I want to show you my plan to power this Quonset hut and the new sawmill building with the Geniverse Home Power Pro 2. So, our house is up here, and then we have our electric service, and then we have power trenched into the main shop. And there's a 200 amp service in the shop. But then, I ran a conduit over to the equipment building. It's just a small shed, just has a couple lights and one plug in it. And I put a small, like, 30 or 50 amp breaker box in that building. Then I put up the Quonset hut, and I'm like, how do I get power out here? Now I'm gonna put up a sawmill building, and that building's gonna need lights, and I wanna set up next to the sawmill, I wanna have a resaw station. And I wanna be able to charge stuff out there and everything else. So I was looking at, you know, do I, I don't wanna daisy chain power out to all these buildings. So I was thinking, do I trench all the way from the, the main electrical service? Do I see if the electric company will come out here and put in another service behind the Quonset hut? Those are expensive options and they only put power in one place. Whereas using a unit like this allows me to have power here or out there or to take this with me on a job for whatever I might be doing. These portable power stations have become really popular lately and for good reason. It's just a really useful and versatile tool. And because of that, I've been approached by at least five or six, if not as many as 10 companies wanting me to make a video about their portable power station. And I've been declining those offers because I already have one. It's a smaller one than this, and I didn't really need one. But the one I have, which is actually Geniverse brand as well, is, it's a great unit. I've been really happy with it, but I can't run a table saw off of it. And for me, I only wanted a new one if it could run everything that I want to do. And that means an air compressor, any kind of a power tool, and the lights for this. I only wanted it if it was really going to help me because the last thing I want is to turn this YouTube channel into a never-ending infomercial for products. The specific unit I have here is the Geniverse Home Power Pro 2. It's got 2200 watts of continuous output, which equates to 18 or 19 amps. And the majority of anything that most of us use on a daily basis isn't over 15 amps on a 110 appliance. So it should be able to power any kind of power tool I want to use while also running some lights or charging a phone or or little things. And mainly what I want to do in this video is plug a bunch of stuff in this and see how long it's gonna last. When I took this out of the box, it said 0% battery. Plugged it in to a wall outlet. It said charged in approximately two hours. I went and got some enchiladas here in town. It's about 10 minutes away. And in the time it took me to drive over there, get something to eat and come back, it was already 80% charged. So. Didn't take too long. And the website said one to two hours, so I'm gonna say that's accurate. Then I've got two solar panels here with it. And you know what? We'll look at the solar panels here in a minute. Right now, I wanna start plugging some stuff into this so that by the end of the video, we can test out the battery life. So we'll start with a, a small thing that's actually gonna be really convenient for me is charging my camera batteries. So I'm always out here working. I gotta stop, you know, every, 30 minutes or an hour and run in and, and get a new battery for the camera. So we'll plug this in. It says it's charging. And on here, this charger is using eight watts of power. And at that rate, 99.9 .9 more hours. So I could charge, it's unlimited. With you, you would probably take two weeks of charging something like this to run the battery down. But 100 hours is the max it says on it. And let's go ahead and charge my phone. And my phone is at 90% battery life, so I think it's doing the smart charge thing because it's only drawing four watts. So these two things together, pulling 12 watts, 
99.9 .9 more hours of charging at that rate. Now, let's activate the AC side. I've got a Craftsman work light out here. And now we're up to 42 watts. Hours remaining, 45 hours. So charging these two things and running this light, this battery will stay up for 45 hours. Right now filming this, and a lot of times filming this, I have two DeWalt work lights out here. Just so you can try to see my face a little better with the light behind me. And I'm constantly going back up to the shop to swap out these batteries. Let's go ahead and charge one of these DeWalt batteries. This is one of those uh, 20 volt, 60 volt flex volt setups. And that's charging. We're now using 67 watts. I can run this charger, this charger, the phone charging, and this light for 30 more hours. Not too shabby. Now, let's go to something a little bigger. And if anyone's interested in getting any of the Geniverse products, I did get a discount code where you can save a little bit of money on ordering one of these. So I'll put that information in the video description. Now, I really need to move the Model A and, and get some work done on it, but I've tried to start it a couple times and the battery's always dead. 50 amp engine start, 10 amp boost, six to two amp charge. Pretty nice little battery charger here. We're gonna run it over, hook it up to the tractor, start charging that battery, and see how long this'll charge that. So, that says it's on and charging. So at this point, we are running this work light, a DeWalt battery, my camera battery, my cell phone, and a trickle charge to the tractor battery. All of that is taking 300 watts, and this will run for 7.6 hours running all of this at once. Now let's just make sure that that's even accurate. I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna get some bigger power tools. I'm gonna get my table saw, an air compressor, just a bunch of, bunch of tools and bring out here and, and put it to a little more thorough test. But while I do that, I'm gonna leave this running and make sure we don't have any sudden drops. Now, if I wanted to run all of this charging all day, I'm just out here working the whole day. I'm, and I'm charging stuff, I'm charging the battery, maybe I'm charging the battery on the, the sawmill, whatever the case is, I can charge this at the same time by plugging in the solar panels. And the solar panels, each of these is 200 watts charging. So I'm currently using 300 watts of output. I could run this setup, everything that's plugged into it right now, in theory, I could run this indefinitely because I'd be charging at least the same rate I'm drawing. So after running that stuff and me testing it the other day, we're at 95% battery. Using nothing right now, we'll try the drill. On startup, this drill went to 700 at startup and 400 continuous. Recip saw was 400 at startup and uh, 250 continuous, so it should easily be able to run both of these at the same time. That's using 700 watts when it's capable of 2200 watts. So if I'm charging a battery, running three lights, and charging my phone and then I want to start working I don't have to unplug stuff like I could be running the recip saw and someone else out here helping me and we can run the circular saw at the same time none of that's gonna be a problem so let's go up to something a little bigger I've got this job site table saw cobalt it's a pretty nice little saw about as big as you'd ever want to have as a portable saw that you take with you and then I've got this air compressor here which is, you know, when I said I was gonna test it on an air compressor, I have one of those little pancake units that's one horsepower, I think. This is a much bigger 
compressor. This is two horsepower, 60 gallon, and it's two stage. And I actually, I tried to look up and see how much draw this had and I couldn't find it because they've changed at Harbor Freight. They've changed, I don't think they have this exact same compressor. So I'm gonna try running this now and then we'll do the table saw. I'll get you a close up on this. So the compressor is drawing 1100 to 1200 watts and that was saying it could run that for 1.9 hours. So if you think about the way a compressor works, let's think real world, say I'm out here and I've got someone helping me and we're building a project out here and we're using an air nailer. We got measure, cut, nail, measure, cut, nail, plan. I feel like you could work all day running this because your air compressor is maybe running a fourth of the time and it says you can go 1.9 hours, you could probably work an eight hour day. And if you had this plugged into solar panels and we're running that air nailer in this compressor, I think you could work as long as you want. It's gonna keep up with you. So, very impressive. Table saw is running 300 watts. And it says you could run the table saw continuously for three hours. Now let's get really crazy with it and see if this power station will run this air compressor and this table saw at the same time. I really don't think it will, but there's only one way to find out. And I don't think, I don't think you're gonna damage it. If you say, I don't know how much this draws, it might be too big, let's just plug it in. It's got overload protection. You're not gonna hurt the unit. I'm running a two horsepower air compressor and a table saw both off of one power inverter. That's pretty impressive to run a two horsepower compressor and a table saw at the same time. That's running 1920 watts. It would run it for one hour. One thing to note on the table saw, it will draw more power when you're actually cutting with it. So even though it ran both of these, if I was pushing a board through, it probably wouldn't run them both. But we're just finding capabilities. What's the scenario while I need, where I need to cut a board while the compressor's running up? I mean, it could happen, but I am really impressed with what this thing was able to do. Let's take a quick look at the solar panels and wrap this thing up. I really didn't want this to be like an unboxing or reading off all the stats about it or anything like that because all I really care about is how much work can you do with it. But uh, I've shown you the front I will show you the back and the, how everything connects. And my point about this not being an unboxing is to say all this is really well packaged. Their, their manuals are very clear and easy to understand and have a lot of information in them. This is your regular AC power charging cord plugs in right here. It looks like pretty much any other cord. And we've got a nice cord here that lets you charge from the old cigarette lighter style 12 volt power port. And obviously plugs into your car or whatever else. And then plugs in right there. Same thing here. This is all really slick. Looks great. It's got these protective cases for the solar panels, unzip it right here, and this is what your solar panel looks like. It has magnetic closures on it, so it pops right open, but it will keep itself closed. Now, the ones I had before were just like this. This one is twice as big. It's got four panels to it. And each section has a kickstand, so you can have these be freestanding. And then your zip up pouch that it comes in has a pocket right here. That's where you keep your cables for charging it 
and it's got a manual with information on the solar panels. The rating says it takes three to four hours to charge this unit with these panels, which is not bad at all. I think the other one was like six hours. So they've upgraded their technology a little bit. Also, this is, each of these is 200 watts. So you're charging it at 400 watts. So that was quick and easy. You just unfold that, plug your power cord in, same round fitting here, and we're plugged in. Now this says it can take four of these. You buy little splitter boxes. So I got two solar panels. You could run four if you wanted to charge this thing fast. It's currently charging at 79 watts. Says it will take 5.3 hours for this one panel to recharge the box. Now that's because the sun is over there and it's not getting direct sunlight. Probably if I turned it, it'll get more. Let's check. Yeah, so same panel. All I did was rotate it. We're now getting 133 watts and it will charge in 2.7 hours. So if I set the other one next to it, we'd be getting 266 watts and have 1.4 hours to charge this. So it's all gonna depend on the conditions, if it's cloudy or sunny, where the sun's at. But I think if I set these up along the building over there and just left them there, it would charge this for well, six hours every morning, six or eight hours, and probably just be full all the time. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. So you'll see updates on this as we go along. I think these are fantastic. I think Generverse makes a quality unit. I already own the 1000 watt unit and put a lot of use on it. It's a great portable power unit. Never had any problems with it. Battery life still seems good after I've had it a long time. So I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to more of our videos and I'll see you next time.